Hello and welcome to this overview of recording content onto the ATEM Mini Extreme ISO. I've set out on this journey just to learn how to do this and I'm at the early stage of it so forgive me if I make a few little uh, mistakes on this but let's just get with it and see how it goes for me. Let me show you the environment that I've created in order to do this. I wanted to A practice with my equipment and B uh, record several streams that I could then post edit and look at the difference between the ISO version and the OBS version which I've been playing with for some time. So let me show you what's taking place here. This is I've got a, a schematic and I've got a, an image of the physical environment here. Let me just go through the schematic first. You'll notice there are one, two, three, four, five sources. There are three cameras, four cameras, three um, SLRs or um, mirrorless. Well, they're all actually these are all mirrorless, and this is a conventional video camera. So the first camera is the Sony FDR AX53. Quite a good picture. It's quite an old camera. I've had it about four or five years, and I'm quite happy with that. All these cameras are capable of 4K, but in fact, because of the restriction of 1K on the ATEM. I'm doing everything in 1K. I'm also aware that if I wanted to, I could record the ISOs in the 1K version, use them as proxies, and then if I, I was able to take the raw versions off the cameras, I can introduce those and over, overlay them. So there's plenty of options uh, that can take place there. So let me just go through the schematic. So you can see the uh, the heart of the system is an iPad, this iPad here, which contains the Smart Prompt, uh, Smart Prompt Pro, which is a voice activated prompter. And I'll show you how hopefully that, how that works by uh, playing around with the ISOs to, to drop it in to see how it works. I've also got um, it connected to the prompter. So there's a split here, which one goes into port eight of the ATEM of the split, the HDMI split out here and the other side goes into the prompter monitor so you can see it's there and it's also on the prompter here the fdrx is coming in and going in at port 4 uh, the eoso is going into port 2 the 7gx is into, into port 7 this is the image that as the 7gx creates i've also got um two mechanisms here for recording the first one is going to and these are the um USB C ports on the ATEM. One of them's going into my computer and I'm recording the live cuts, the stream if you like, into OBS and that produces this OBS recording that you can see here. The other one goes into an SSD which is able to record all these um, sources. The blank ones will just show a very short blank video where the rest will show every single moment the camera was on. Whilst, uh, whilst recording during this session. And that will recreate this folder here. Now I need to explain uh, why it's called Untitled in a minute. That was a little faux pas on my uh, behalf. The audio I've gone, I've got the, the, Wave 3, the Wave 3 microphone, which you can just see there. Let me just see if I can zoom in. There we go. There's the Wave 3 microphone there. And that's, that's going into the computer and recorded on the computer. I'm also recording on a Wave microphone at the moment now as well. And I, for a little backup, I clipped a little Lavia mic on here. And I've got that going into um, mic one of the ATEM <clears throat> just as a backup and if I need to use it. So that's essentially the, uh, the physical system. Now, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you why this is called Untitled because I made a little bit of a faux pas while setting this because I'm a newbie. So let me just go to here and show you why that is the case. In the initial setup of the recording, in order to start the ISO recording, you need to go into the ATM software or indeed have a macro that will do this. You can start and stop the record stream here if you wish to do so. This is the live stream if I was going out live stream. But in order to record onto that SSD, you, it, you're best putting a, a file name in there which is consistent with the theme of your project and that will come out with that theme and it will be mapped through all the files that are created within the, the ISO folder as it were. So hopefully um, that makes sense. So let me just go to uh, what it looks like when you record that. So there's my OBS recording which I just copied from the, from, from the computer across to there. I renamed it because it was a different name under OBS. If I double click on this on title folder, which is basically the ISO folder, you can see it contains audio files. It contains video files. 
it also contains a, a DRP file. Now, these the DRP file, this DPR, DPR, excuse, excuse the, the mouth. I've been messing around this for a while, so the mouth is completely gone, but my apologies for that. The uh, DRP file is a project file, and when I double click on that, that will load up what you'll see in a minute near enough. I've touched, I've played around with it a little bit, but it's mainly it, double clicking on that will bring up a, uh, a <clears throat> DaVinci Resolve and it then compiles the whole thing in a very sweet way for very easy editing and it is uh, it is very very nice indeed. So let me go now to here and that will that's what this is what happens. So on the initial load up let me go to the timeline for this and if I go to the um, the untitled bit you can see um, this is under this regime this is the Blackmagic folder and within the Blackmagic folder, you can see you've got the ISO version of it, which are these, all these are the camera ones. In the Blackmagic RAW, if you if you record a draw with Blackmagic cameras, I think the RAWs go in there. I haven't been able to test that because I did, I've only got one Blackmagic camera. And I've not been able to use that in this context. All the others you can see are Canon cameras. But in, in within this here, you've got the each camera. And if you go to each camera, you'll see each camera will have its video on that. Yes, camera two, which has got an input. Camera three has got an input. Camera four uh, hasn't got an input, if I remember rightly. Camera five has. Camera six has, and camera seven has, and camera eight has, which is the prompter. So that's the structure of the ISO file, and you can see within the timeline here, within the timeline, all the cuts are in there, but they're very distinct, and I'll explain that in a minute. But before doing that, allow me to go back to the. Uh, I, uh, the OBS version. Now the OBS version as it stands now, as I scroll through it here, you'll see it's recording every single cut that I put in there. Okay, now let me go to a cut point which is just about here. Let me zoom in, hopefully I've gone close enough to that cut. Yes I have, I think I have, so I just need to move it over a little bit. My navigation skills are not great, but you can see there's actually a cut between between there and there. I'm going from, that's the G7 to the um, the Canon R. Now that cuts, that's cut as it is. That was the live cut. There's not much I can do with that. It's there. I I can go in and I can maybe drop content in there, but I can't play with it in in the sophisticated way I can play with it within the ISO version. So let me just jump to the ISO version here. I'll go to the ISO version here and you'll see the difference. I'll go to roughly the same cut point, which is probably going to be yeah, it doesn't matter where it is. It's around about here. Let me zoom into that area here, if I may. So let me go to there. So you can see there's a cut between there and there, right? Now, the beauty of this is, notice on the out point of that cut, uh, you'll see I haven't quite arrived at the, at the, at there, at hitting the button. So what I'll do is, let's say that was a, a little mistake and I, I wanted to go to there. I'll just move this over to here. And you see now, that cut has changed. See, it's changed, which is pretty cool. So you can get, go in and dynamically change those cuts. What I'd like to do now is to drop into the part of this um, process where I can start to use the power of the recordings that are made from the individual streams. So next thing I want to do is go into the cut mode and always make sure the sync bin, uh, sync bin is switched on, which it is. And you'll notice now I've got all the camera sources here, the, the entire set of them, all eight of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to drop in um, the actual, I'm going to select camera eight, which is the, uh, the, the prompter. So what I'm going to do is I'm now going to just take a, a bit of this prompter and I'm going to drop it onto the timeline here, which will allow me to actually then go in and manipulate that and get the prompter to run simultaneously with the content that's there. So let me do that. So all I need to do now is drop that on top by clicking that onto here. So I've placed it on top. If I go back to the edit point, you'll see now that is actually there. And what I can do is I can go into here and then I can start to manipulate that in order to place it in the position that I want. So the first thing I want to do is to select the um, this I want to select the transform and I'm going to zoom it down to a smaller size and then I'm going to move it over to this top right hand corner and I'll I'll crop it as well too let me crop it to make it look as best I can just a little bit of manipulation just to so I'm going to 
bring that in so it's very clear you can see the prompter how it works and let me go back to transform here I don't know the short, shortcut key so I'm just using the mouse very inefficient I realize that so this this is now synced up this this is actually now synced up with the um, it's actually synced up with the with that particular track so now if I play this you'll see it's synced up hello and welcome to this short video I've been faffing around with different bits of technology trying to decide on which combination of cameras microphones and lights suitable for YouTube content creation I'm now happy with the tech which means it's time to stop procrastinating so I've decided to have a go at demonstrating okay you can see clearly um including the fluff there i'll have to bleep a bit of that out and i'll you can see it works very well so that's just an idea of what you can do with it there's lots and lots of things it's a big learning curve i hope i live long enough to learn enough to enjoy this so i hope it's been useful i'll leave it at that and um, look forward to seeing you or speaking to you in the next video in the meantime you guys take care